welcome back to Billy Bourne Training Centre. Today we're going to be talking about floor paint. Uh, there's different types, we have one case and two case. So what we'll do is we'll explain that as we're going along. Um, here's some of the products we're going to be using, some masking, rollers, scrapers, and of course we'll talk a bit about the safety and things. The different types of floor paints, we have one case and two case. So I'll just explain that, we'll start off with the which is the easiest paint, which is what we call a single pack paint, sometimes referred as a 1K paint. Um, basically, very easy to use. Uh, it's designed for light traffic, so areas like where there be just foot traffic, or maybe a garden shed where there's just lawnmowers, ladders, that type of stuff. It's very easy to use, straightforward. Um, and then after that, we would have what we call two pack paints, or in this case, we have a two pack epoxy paint, which has been designed more for commercial use, of a heavy traffic use. So if you were driving cars over it, if it was in an area where there was going to be spillages, chemical spillages, whatever, you'd have to look maybe at the 2K epoxy paint, which is tougher, durable, and will last a lot longer. Okay, before we start, we need to identify the floor. So we need to decide what kind of condition the floor is in, what type of floor it is, is it concrete, is it wooden, whatever, um, and also, the floor where there's been power flowed in a lot of industrial units, uh, you might have a power flowed floor. If it is, you'll need an acid treatment to go on first, so the paint has something to adhere to. It was a standard poured concrete floor using screeds. The surface will be porous enough, so there won't be an issue. Um, paintings. Also, it's worth noting as well, if you have a situation with water leaks or rising damp, that can be a major problem, so no matter what type of paint you use, that'll just simply lift it off. If that's the situation, you need to sort out that first. We've also put a very useful link on this video, so if you click on that, it'll give you the do's and don'ts about painting a concrete floor and what to look for. Okay, the first thing you need to do is to prepare the floor. In my situation here, I've got some, some heavy old paint stuck to the floor, so I'm going to use a scraper, very convenient tool, and we have a roller pole. It's be the same pole we're going to use when we come to rolling the paint onto the floor. So to save your back, that screws in like that, and then we can use that as a scraper for scraping off any um, bits of old concrete paint or dirt that's welded into the ground. So after we've, we've scraped the floor down or sanded the floor down, what we'll do then is we we'll sweep up, get rid of all the loose material, dust, dirt, get it all off, and then we're ready to move on to the actual painting of the floor. Now we're moving on to the mixing process. This particular paint we're using is an epoxy 2K paint. So to explain that, we have the paint, we have the hardener, and then we have the tinners to go into it. The mixing ratio for this particular one is three and a half parts paint to one part hardener to 20% tinners. So just to work out how you'd actually do that, what we use is a, a plastic mixing cup. It's calibrated, so it has measurements on the side. So basically we would pour the paint up to 350 grams, then we'll go with another 100 grams of paint of hardener and then 20% tinners. Give it a good mix around uh, and then we're ready then to, to move on to actually paint the floor. So also as what mentioned that for every litre of this particular floor paint you'll get seven metres square. Provided the floor is in good condition that's not too porous so we expect uh, seven metres square per litre of paint. So what we're doing in this case is we're pouring the paint up to 350 millilitres and then we're going to pour in the hardener and bring it up to 450 millilitres. And then the tinners, uh, we're using 20% tinners because it's the first coat and what it'll do is act as a sealer, so it'll sink down into a lot of porous surfaces. And when we allow that to dry, it'll put a good ground coat for our second coat. When we're mixing up our second coat of paint, we'll be using 10 to 15% tinners. It's very important to stir the paint, so allow yourself about 60 seconds or a minute and a half 
just to give the paint a good stir around because we want to make sure that the hardener gets well mixed and the thinner gets well mixed in with the paint. When we've done that, we're going to let the paint sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, so let the whole lot activate, and then we move on to applying it on the floor. But you only mix the amount of paint you're going to actually use because as soon as you've activated the paint with the hardener, the paint will only last for about four to five hours. So be sure not to mix too much paint. Fresh paint always works better anyway. Here's a very useful tip. What we're going to do here is we're going to cover the, um, the tray, the paint rolling tray, and allow us then to reuse this tray again a few times after. We can even use, if we're using different colors, it'll stop the tray from getting destroyed. Okay, it's worth mentioning at this stage that we would use a short pile roller, which will give us a good even finish. It's ideal for applying floor paint. Okay, we're applying our first coat here. We'll apply one even coat to the floor and then we'll leave it dry for eight hours. Ideal is to let it dry overnight and then we'll apply our second coat. Okay, we've finished painting our floor, we've given it two full coats, we've allowed eight hours between each coat, and we've left 24 hours, as you can see we're walking on now, it's fully cured. Um, also we showed you that we covered up the, the tray for painting, and I'll show you why. If you have any further questions, please contact an advisor at vinnieborn.com or alternatively email sales at vinnieborn.com.